Yeah, <laughs> I just admitted it to my colleagues here. I am an a-hole. Sometimes I'm just an a-hole. Especially when I sell my artist six screens as only one. Give them six, let them only get paid for one. Uh, that counts for this screen and the following five. Um, yeah, forget it. I won't comment each of those. <laughs> Jeez, I'm such a jerk. Yeah, I get a lot of deserved hatred from Alex, one of my scripters from the core scripting team of Deponia and Harvey's New Eyes. Alex, the Russian, he had to script the whole logic to that labyrinth puzzle you're about to see on short notice, since it was one of the last things we got done. And there was a crap load of conditions on this one he had to take care of. It forced him to repeatedly go to the artists and tell them he needed another animation since it could possibly occur there. All despite the fact that the puzzle itself is really simple and reasonable. I think he forgave me by now. Uh, at least he talks to me again and stopped throwing stones at me. Yeah, sounds like a healthy relationship, don't you think? <laughs> Cleanliness seems to be a... The doormat is... I read it's cute. Hey, tiny bar. Need a... I could flash, but I don't have the heart. I don't want it to... Is that really a... <laughs> the Blind Spot, an installation by Raphael Rumbrand. I really love it. It's cute. Eh? Hey, tiny. Need a. Thanks. Genius! I always knew it! Ah, there you are. What are you up to? I, uh, uh, sightseeing? You wanted to delete the security video from our cabin that shows you without your disguise, right? What? <laughs> no! You don't have to hide these things from me. No matter what you've done, we're a team now. Really? Even that I trimmed my toenails over your breakfast cereal? Uh, we'll talk about that later. For now, let's focus on how we can get the video data. Oh yeah, good idea. This place must be crawling with... Um, security systems. <laughs> Was that me? That's not so good, is it? The alarm still hasn't gone off yet. We're probably safe as long as you don't mess with the terminals. Well, what do I do now? Hey... Try to distract the cameras. Then perhaps I can reach a terminal unnoticed. Well, that shouldn't be a problem. Cameras love me. I'm the more photogenic of the two of us anyway. Aha, uh -huh. I think I can distract the camera. Hey! It looks like they can only move at a 45-degree angle. Walk along the wall and they'll follow you. Yeah, easy peasy. First I need to go to the terminal on the left. Let me know when you've cleared the way. Okie doke. Nope. Nope. 
Nope. Nope. Ah, uh, I uh, just a um... oh. Huh, this works better than I thought. Yeah, and it's pretty groovy too. Diddle dit dit Rufus, Rufus, Rufus. Diddle Rufus. Um. 
Wolfes. Yeah, 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 Oh. Wonderful. The grace, the discretion, the ability to ignore the entire world around oneself. Are we ta- oh. <coughs> Are we talking about the same world, Argus? The one you want to blow up? Touché, Cletus, but I wonder where this change of heart comes from. I, I, I'm full of surprises. Oh, like a circus horse. It's a shame that we don't have any time for this. Take the girl to the bridge. Miss Gold, if you would be so kind. Yeah, yeah. Goal. You'll think of something. And what do we do with this scum? He is no longer needed. Get rid of him. Yeah, I, I think he meant that in the uh, metaphorical sense. <laughs> Move. You're coming with us. No, no, wait. wait please, please. Just, just wait. <laughs> We're not here to negotiate. Yeah, but, but don't I get a last request? I know I'm going to regret this. Now, what is it? A last... Of course. Please wait here. What? I have to roll... Never mind. Uh, I've re... Uh... Money? The organon is a... Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but I can't ask for something... Mm. Oh, no problem. I was going to throw you. We have to have the cruiser. We'll be pulling into... Next. Wait, are you already... Well, how can that have been my last request when I still have one? Hmm. To see... No. According to the... Yeah. Any... But... A last cup of coffee. Well, there's no reason why not. Hey! <laughs> you just spilled your last request, you fool. You... Ah! In a stressful situation, nothing beats a good cup of coffee. You know what would be totally wicked? No. What? If we would simply turn around for a second. Oh, uh, you got some funny ideas. No, I'm quite serious. I'll cut it out, you crazy son of a gun. You don't think I would do it, do ya? Look, I'm standing the other way around! <laughs> You're being silly. Really? I'll never... Oh, come on! <laughs> Uh-oh. Run. Run. I do not wish to be disturbed. Understood? Not for any reason. Not by anyone. Uh, uh, yes, the bailiff, sir. With the exception of the interrogator, of course. Where is he, anyway? The interrogator has been requested and is on his way, bailiff. I should hope so. And if I have to conduct the interrogation alone again, I shall become quite unpleasant. Then you can draw lots to see who gets to clean the bridge afterwards. The Organon won't be out of commission for long. I'd better get a move on. Shatter their eye sockets! Shush, you lunatic ninny. We have to be quiet. Why are you following me anyway? Rufus belongs to me. Understand? Stab him in the diaphragm! Tear off his nostrils! <laughs> Although I must admit that your suggestions do not lack a certain creativity. Uh-oh, Cletus and Donna. How the heck did they get here? <laughs> they still haven't seen me. I better take cover. Uh, this background, and that's something I must say for the whole chapter, wasn't finished by Micha, but that was uh, the work of our good Fabi, uh, another veteran animator, and we can always count on her to freelance jobs through some projects. Uh, seems like even if you leave, you will return to the Dalek eventually. Yeah, nothing you can do against that. Uh, Fabi also studied with our chief animator at the animation school here in Hamburg. Um, do you even say study in that case? I mean, you, you just you don't study, do you? You just 
draw stuff on piece of paper, lines and so on. And no disrespect here, but uh, by the way, don't confuse our animators with animators from a holiday resorts or stuff. Uh, those are totally unrelated jobs. It's a mistake our boss Carson likes to make when he presents our stuff. He always ends up confusing those two. The word is, of course, animator. The closet would be up unfortunately. Huh. That always. <laughs> huh. At least I better take. An official breathing down my neck. Idiots up front. I don't think it's something fat. Huh. That's exactly what I... Very good. That should suffice as a hiding place. But first, I want to... And now, take cover. Ah, there you are. That's what I was about to say. Now I have something urgent to tell you. I am the real Cletus. That other chap was merely an imposter. Uh, if you say so. So you no longer resist coming with me? Resist? I insist upon it. Uh-huh. Well then, move it. Gladly. <laughs> that went well, and now I... Huh? huh? Wow, a bunk. How original. Would you like to make a complaint, Miss Gold? My nose itches. Miss Gold, stop bleating. You'll have a genuine reason soon enough. Ah, the interrogator. Finally. Leave us alone, bridge guard. Yes, sir, bailiff, sir. Let me go, Argus. Do you have any idea how many innocent lives are at stake? Do you even care? Have you no conscience? <laughs> Quite the contrary, my dear. I am not who you think I am. Rufus? Or, no, Cletus? Uh, who? Neither. Bailiff Argus. The right hand of Prime Controller, Ulysses. You do know Ulysses, don't you? You know that he is the actual monster in this little play. For years, I have stood quietly by and watched how the extermination of an entire people was prepared, merely to allow a privileged few to enjoy a better life. I know Ulysses better than anyone else. I know how he thinks. Only I can put an end to this madness. But for that, I need the ascension codes. But then we're on the same side. Why didn't you let Rufus and me finish what we were doing? Rufus, I shudder at the very name. I will not leave the salvation of 11,000 souls to that blundering would-be hero. Wow, 11,000 people. So many. Rufus rescued me, you know. Is that a joke? This Rufus has caused you nothing but grief. He's not trying to help you. He's only using you to escape his own miserable existence. But... Come with me, go. I will accompany you to Elysium as your fiancé. You know, I could take the Ascension Codes without your consent. But you're a clever girl. You understand that I am the perfect choice for this mission. I... I can't. Why not? Because... Because... Uh... Why? I've got to do something. If only I knew what all these buttons are for. Hey, stop! Huh? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm not doing anything. It's the machine. It just went crazy. Uh, no, 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 no! Stop, stop, stop! I said stop it! Stop! So... Huh? Was that... What's happening to me? Miss Cole, stay with me! You have been injected with an overdose of sodium amethol! You must stay with me now! Do you hear me? Stay with me! Mm, no... What? Why not? Because... Gold! Because... 
I love Rufus. Go, stop! Uh, Go! Get this Go. useless scrap in out of my sight heaven? at once! Throw it overboard! Go. Immediately! What have I done? Go! What have I done? Regarding Gold's death and the loss of the Ascension Colts, I desist from my usual bomb modes. Things were in a mess, the tightness in his chest was no less as big as the Colossus of Rhodes. And as he fell from the skies, his life flashed before his eyes. Bereft of hope, no courage left to black up. He did finally comprehend this was a definite end. Came over this time, he completely fucked up. This time he completely fucked up. Hell, of course. So that was quite a bitter pill to swallow, wasn't it? And now we woke up in a rather familiar environment. That's strange. So let me talk about this for a bit. Most importantly, we went through relatively great efforts rewriting parts of the original concept for the third installment, Goodbye Deponia. We didn't have to do that with the first two parts. Those pretty much played out as initially written, even if five years had passed um, when production of Goodbye Deponia started. Mm -hmm. In fact, I felt like uh, Cary Grant during the filming of North by Northwest, but I think I, I mentioned that already. We had a bunch of ideas how to illustrate Rufus' lowest low, and originally we wanted it to play out on the coast of Porto Fisco. He was supposed to be washed on the shore of a familiar screen from part two, where we uh, met Goon, for example, for the first time, and could wallow in some misery. Yeah, but that was the old concept. It would have been too short, not matching the scope and depth of the other two installments. So I took my time, about half a year, to rewrite and extend this part. And this is one of the scenes, and one of the best I might add, that turned out to be a whole new addition to the game. The idea was to let Rufus hit his lowest low, and after all, what would be truly hell for him? Exactly, to bring him back into the tutorial room, which, uh, by the way, was the idea of my girlfriend, Anne. I thought that this idea was pure gold, since we'd also cast more light on the tutorial room, which is kind of peculiar. Uh, the room appears time and again, Rufus assumes already it must be some nightmare scenario. Um, so ending up in that room must lead Rufus to the conclusion that he actually died and that this must be hell. Adding more to that, Rufus can't even describe this properly. Another idea transported into the concept as I wanted to take away his common specific eloquence to show he's down and out. So he refused to talk. Uh, he's absolutely not in the mood to comment on anything. Instead, uh, all we get are very size. I bet this was quite a challenge in terms of acting, right, Rufus? Well, let's just say it was a smart move uh, to keep me quiet in this scene. Uh, otherwise, I might have actually had to resort to singing. Because if you look at this room, the first thing that comes to mind is chanson. You know, they... <laughs> Well, well. Huh? Oh. Ouch. Hmm? Hmm. Well...
Stupid disassembly robot, it's his own fault. Yeah. I don't want to spoil too much for you, as I don't know in which phase of the game you actually clicked this. Um, yeah, that's always a tough call I have to make. I just don't know what you people are doing at this moment you clicked, uh, or what you are about to do, and uh, that's why I want to direct your attention to these glorious construction robots in the foreground who, and I'm very proud of that, are 100% and only superficially polished uh, based on my sketches. Yeah, colors included. Yeah, they're completely the same as in my sketches. I uh, always like to draw robots and machines with all kinds of absurd joints and all that. Really like to draw that stuff. And uh, colorimetry is also a major thing in the pony. Yeah. Usually we have a spectrum of three colors, red, blue and green. And if you paid attention, you noticed uh, that these are the colors of the borders uh, of the box cover as well. Red is part one, blue is part two, and green is part three. And these colors also reflect in the... Uh, well, yeah, you know that by now. Argos is another Rufus. What? What's going on here? Where am I? I just don't get it. <laughs> right. Yeah, and these three colors also correspond with those three versions of Rufus. Rufus, Cletus, Argos. In a way you may yet have to discover. Enjoy that. Yes, red, blue and green. Three primary colors. What the big deal? I actually don't know. I had some visual light motif in any case and uh, I didn't even put that much thought into it. That's a bit awkward. <laughs> huh. Must be the famous light at the end of the tunnel. Light at the end of the tunnel. Cure. It's only an illuminated button. Ah! This isn't hell after all. It's some kind of factory. And a crappy one at that. Could this mean that I'm not dead after all? Can somebody explain what's going on? Ah, who cares? I demand some answers! Oh, rats. Abandoned factories have something very monumental about them. Not looking at them is pretty, pretty hard. Uh, it's surprising that there aren't more accidents happening when you drive to Hamburg, for example. You have that free port, and to your right is this colossal hulk of an old factory. And since it's so far away, you still can't grasp the size of that thing. At nightfall, they switch on the lights and give the monarch a genuine, hardcore Ridley Scott sci-fi flick look. <laughs> I just can't take my eyes off that. A uh, lot more accents should happen there. Uh, maybe that's the reason why the Elb Tunnel is closed so often. 
Uh, there are a lot of those factories, uh, actually, uh, mostly near freeways, since land prices are lower there, or nobody cares if toxic clouds loom over the region. Don't know. Uh, these kind of things are more annoying in or near towns, I reckon. <laughs> People in cars don't deserve any better anyway. Uh, yeah, I don't know why there aren't more accidents, uh, but due to all this, this factory here kinda didn't live up to my expectations. Admittedly, uh, that's also a result of the puzzle mechanics involved. There are a lot of puzzle components that interfere with free background design here that prevented us from doing something truly colossal with this factory uh, like I had in mind. Uh, pity, really, but there's still this flare of rust and at least we don't have any accidents in the screen. Another thing I need to mention here is my unending gratitude for Heiner, another Daedalic scripter. He's actually part of uh, another team, but he, Alex from my team and Ede, who's a spider in our network of projects, uh, form the make force of this company. That means whenever things get rough and we need some serious crunching, that is, time is running out and there's still a lot to do, those three jump into their superhero costumes and save the day and the game. And Good by Deponia was the first project where I had the honor to directly witness our Make Forces might with Heiner at their side. And yet again, uh, they saved us. There was an endless tide of little bugs in the screen uh, we all had no explanation for, and Heiner fixed all of them. And how did he do that? He redid the whole thing from scratch. Yes, the whole damn screen. Awesome guy, our Heiner. Time to clock out yet? So now, next, I'm going to use it to get... Take that! Here the game meanders a bit into ecotrophology. I have a latent neck for nutrition science myself. Uh, those who know me well though uh, also know that when they want proper nutrition advice they should travel to Australia or a similar place with the equator running between them and me. That's my best nutrition advice mostly refers to increase your chocolate per coffee ratio. Uh, by the way I lost some weight during the last month. Yeah. You can't see that right now, but I really did. Uh, it's probably an age thing, but I also get a few pro tips from some nice vegans I know. They illustrated what is wrong with my nutrition. Uh, in retrospect, I get the impression that I should have died long ago due to my excessive calorie abuse. Life and food are, of course, tightly connected, and so the theme here is more like an ecotrophology theme tapping into the field of philosophy and less a pure ecotrophologic uh, matter. And while the connection between lifestyle and nutrition is evident, the theme of this chapter is clearly of philosophical nature. This is illustrated by the example of the olives. That's why we have an olive-colored background. Uh, you have my sincere gratitude. I can't, I really can't believe you are still listening to this bull thingy yet again. I'm usually not that picky when it comes to waste oil, but this has gone kind of green. And it smells of olives. Blech, disgusting. It's definitely gone bad. The bag says soybeans, but all it contains is little white pellets. Eh, it's probably a colony of roaches.
Not that I really know a lot about olives, but these are obviously not ripe yet. <laughs> They're still totally green. This water looks totally different from the water at home. It's fizzy and it's not green. There are more effective ways of hacking something to pieces. <laughs> empty, and you like the way up. What am I supposed to get? It's empty. Not that I really. But these are. <laughs> there's. Wow, what a big sip. Oh, I can't believe it. He's bolted the door from the outside. But that's not gonna stop me. <laughs> door, meet Rufus. Hello? Quit playing games with me! Oh, I've got company. How nice. Nothing is nice here. But you know you're alive again. Isn't that fantastic? No, it's not. I should be dead. Calm yourself. How about a cup of peppermint tea? It's relaxing and refreshes your breath. There's nothing better when you've only just come back from the dead. I don't need no stinking peppermint. I want answers. Where am I? Welcome to my humble abode. You live here? Nice place, huh? This used to be the facility where the Organon was created. A clone factory, in fact. Ugh. It looks more like a waste processing plant. Uh, actually, that's what it is. You need plenty of organic material in order to clone people. <laughs> You're telling me that the Dark Exchequer consists of biological waste? I'd be a little less condescending if I were you, Prototype R. Proto what? Oh yeah, Prototype yourself. I didn't mean to offend you, Rufus. You, you, you know my name? <laughs> of course I do. I'm the one who gave it to you. Wh what are you saying? I admit it's not the most creative name I ever came up with. You're one of a series of prototypes that predated the mass production of the Organon. Only three of them survived. Prototype A, Prototype C, and you. Prototype R. A and C? Argus and Cletus? And R, as in Rufus, exactly. Rufus stands for red-haired. I thought I could tell you apart by the color of your hair, but I never managed to create hair colors that lasted beyond puberty. Unfortunately, that wasn't the only flaw. All the prototypes had problems before I came up with the right composition. The clones were designed as dispensable workers, so I took away your respect for life. Unfortunately, that also meant that many of you were not afraid of death. There were various accidents. Who the crap are you? My name is Hermes. I used to be the head of this clone facility. You've got to be in incredibly old. Technically speaking, I've only lived for two days. I clone myself anew on a regular basis. <laughs> keeps me young, but my genes are old. The intervals keep getting shorter. Why don't you just die? Why would I want to? I feel absolutely fine. That's not what you look like. Why can't you just accept it? Your life has run its course. On the contrary, I'm in top shape. Oh, oh, uh, could you for a moment? Thank you. Now, where was I? You're amazingly fit. Ah, yes, exactly. As a fiddle. 
Why didn't you let me die? You were dead, strictly speaking. I cloned your mortal remains. Yeah, but why? I deserve to be dead. Don't be so hard on yourself. No one should be dead on a beautiful day like this. This isn't a beautiful day. I screwed it all up. Whoa, got a bit of a guilt complex, have we? No matter what you've done, get over it. Life goes on. You call this life? This isn't life. This is a cheap copy of life. A counterfeit. An artificially created imitation. Oh, nothing here is artificial. All my clones are made from organically grown materials. Didn't you say you found the ingredients in the garbage? Biological waste. Organic. 100% natural. Oh, except for the nucleic acid. That is synthesized from radioactive sludge. It's not true! Yes, it is. But it can't be! I'm not like the Organons! I never claimed you were. It's true that your genes are almost identical. You have no respect for life, but you have one thing that they lack completely. Sex appeal. <laughs> Hope. Yeah, and sex appeal, right? I'm not like Cletus or Argus. Of course not. Cletus originally had green hair and Argus blue. But I wasn't thinking of hair. Oh, look, they're conniving backstabbers, while I'm just totally trustworthy. They're arrogant and conceited, but I'm uh, super modest. They're evil assholes, and I'm... Uh, I'm just too wonderful for... Just stop right there, Rufus. Rufus, you're not identical because you are much more than just the sum of your genes. All your experiences, all your memories add up to form the person you are today. You mean we once were completely identical? Only I was capable of learning from my failures? Yes, that's it. Well, close enough, at least. In your case, the gene for learning from your failures wasn't rendered correctly. But the rest is true. Wait, if I'm a clone, wouldn't I have to be very young now? A surprisingly good question. See those containers over there? In them, I simulate the natural process of aging. So you can choose the age of your clones? Exactly. Then why do you look like shit? Uh, don't be so rude. Okay, I'm a clone, right? So why am I still wearing the same coat? Seriously? Oh, not a clothes business again. I create life for crying out loud. You should think that everyone would be totally astounded by that fact. But no, everyone always asks about the outfit. Oh, well, excuse me. Okay, if I'm a clone, why do I remember everything? Oh. You're paying attention. Of course I'm paying attention. That wasn't really intended in your design, but, oh well, the technology is quite simple. I can use a full body scanner like this one to create and save a copy of your entire neural network. In those cloning chambers over there, the newly formed neural pathways are trimmed into the right shape by teeny tiny knives during the maturation process. The process resembles pruning a bonsai tree. The difference being, of course, that the brain is much more complex and it takes mere nanoseconds to cut. Oh, oh, uh, sorry, what, what, what was that after, uh, intended in your design? <laughs> Never mind. It was all for nothing. Deponia's lost, and so's goal, and it's all my fault. Why carry on with this rotten life? Because there is still hope. Life goes on. Life goes on. And how will you make sure of that? Are you going to use that contraption to, to clone all of Deponia? I'll show you what I think of your stupid machine. No, Rufus. No, Rufus. Don't do that. Stop me if you can.
Not the machine! Hey! Stop it! No! There! <laughs> Your turn! What have you done? You destroyed everything! This means it was all for nothing! You've got it at last! You were right about everything, except for one little matter. It is all my fault. It was me who, way back when, believed that Deponia was no longer inhabitable, and I came up with the evacuation plan. I designed Elysium, and I created the Organon, and then, when I was done, I started to have second thoughts. I stayed behind on Deponia to look for a better solution. I had all the time in the world, and I messed it up. I have run out of time. I cannot make up for what I have done. I thought that I had deserved to live with my guilt. But even that concept turned out to be overly optimistic. Because where there is life, there is hope. So what I deserve is to die with my guilt. Go on, then. Shh. What? Goal? Yes, that... But... but goal? Mind-blowing events. Rufus is a clone? Holy smokes! <laughs> you didn't expect that, did you? Yeah, we are right in the cloning lab, and curiously enough, we have the corresponding Simpsons episode running... At this very moment, that's the one where Homer clones himself. Uh, yeah, it's running in the background while recording. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> very nice. Yeah, um, as Joris put that uh, on since we are expecting a show on this channel featuring our studio. Good things come in threes, they say. Uh, that's why we have three cloning pots here. Yeah, uh, like that's the Holy Trinity. You always get three wishes, not five or two. No, you get three wishes. Um, there are the Holy Three Kings. Yeah, uh, and there are the Beastie Boys. Um, and of course, body, mind, and soul. We also split Gold's personality in these uh, three different parts. And three just has something about it. I don't know. Um, yeah, there's also that song from the Sesame Street. Um, or was it even a song? No, it was just some dialogue between Ernie and Bird. But Bird, nothing else with five. No, his favorite number size, but everything comes in threes. Three. I tell you. She's still dead. What did I expect? But Hermes was going to do something about her. Don't tell me he was going to... I really need to talk to him. It's not over till it's over. If only I... It's not... In a chapter dealing with life and death and the things philosophically implied, you also need crows, of course. There are, however, no crows on the Ponya. I told you uh, there were a lot of critters, but uh, there are no crows. And what's better to take their place than vampire platypuses? An obvious choice, if you ask me. How the strange hatchling with a head got uh, in there, well, uh, I don't even dare to guess. A vampire platypus. I've never encountered one of those before. Okay now, take it easy. Oh no, not this again. Gorgeous screen showing you how to handle the cloning pot up close. A lot of switches to be handled here. I always like that when you have buttons and switches that all have a function. How does this or that work? Um, oh, just a sec. How does this work actually? I mean, you somehow ended up clicking my face, but looking at the screen, I wonder if I obscure the lamp in the upper left corner. 
um, does my image obscure it? Uh, probably not, since you couldn't solve the puzzle in that case. Or you would have to go down to the factory hall, as these lamps are connected to those uh, downstairs. Guess I can tell you that without spoiling the puzzle. That means they always show the same condition, and that's the tricky part when it comes to scripting. I did a dummy script of this room. Don't know if I mentioned this, but there's a complete dummy version of Good Bad Eponia done by me. Almost 100% playable, with dummy backgrounds, doodled in a poor Etna style, so I would have a reference to check if all puzzles work as intended. And I always said, uh, oh, please don't change that. L leave it like it is. Uh, the logic works perfectly fine, but eventually some mistakes were found and had to be taken care of accordingly. Thus all had to be done again from scratch, since scripting is uh, easiest then. The thing is, after rebuilding we still had the same old errors in there, since the scripter built just the same stuff again. Uh, one of our often used tropes during development was, but it did work before. The screen reminds me of that, especially the lamp you can't see, cause my visage is in the way. <laughs> At least if Simon didn't take care of that. If I read these gauges right, they indicate the fill level of the machine. I guess this symbol means so the tank doesn't have enough. This gauge is different. I wonder what it means. But as long as it's green, I'm sure it's just fine. This symbol seems so the tank doesn't have enough. I guess this symbol so the tank this so the tank. No way. I'm you, more or less. Before I get myself another Hermes, I... Certainly not. There are more than enough... Wait, stop! It's too late, Rufus. You are right. There is no more hope. No! Oh, crap. What do I do now? tank contains enough protein hmm hmm hope it'll I wonder whether this is one of the I don't know. This seems a little off to me. Yeah, I knew something was wrong with that stuff. The gauge for minerals rose along with the water gauge. Ah, who cares? I killed two birds with one stone. I don't know. Duh. Here goes nothing. Huh. The oil seems to count as fat. Lucky guess. Nah, I should say there's not enough. Whoops. <laughs> What's that popular saying? Beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> I knew it. The protein gauge has risen, and so has the one for carbohydrates. Looks like they were roach eggs after all. This is where then the gauge is over there. Uh, looks like a... 
Wow, what a big... Nice, there's not enough. Whoops. This must so enough minerals for two. No way. I'm you more or less. Sir, there are Before I get myself another Hermes. Huh? Oh, rats.